I've been looking into buying an electric car lately, and I quickly learned that comparing one car to the next hasn't been a very easy thing. So I did a bit of research, and I'm here in this video to share it with you. Shopping for an electric car can be a daunting task. It's such a new technology that uh, each of the manufacturers do things a little bit differently. First, let me clarify that this video is only about electric vehicles, EVs. This isn't a hybrid and this isn't gas powered. Now hybrids are really popular, Prius being the most popular of them all, but the difference between a hybrid and electric vehicle is a hybrid has got electric power and some other form of power. After looking at the 14 electric vehicles that are available here in the United States, I decided to make a spreadsheet so I could compare one car to the next. Now, one thing to keep in mind is on an electric vehicle, you have an electric motor that drives a car. That electric motor can also be used as an electric generator, so it can generate power. And each of these cars have a regenerative mode. So when you're coasting or on the brakes, they're actually putting power back into the system. One interesting thing on the regeneration story is rear wheel drive cars, for example, the BMW i3 that has rear wheel drive, and it uses regeneration in the rear wheels, they limit the amount of regeneration that's made because they don't want you to lock up those rear tires and get out of control. These are the cars that I reviewed, their cost. You'll notice that throughout the spreadsheet, I use light green and orange to identify lowest and highest values in each category. Each vehicle's weight, what their cost per pound is. Some of you might find this interesting. This is a metric that I've used over the years. But one thing to keep in mind is that on some of the vehicles, like the BMW i3 that uses a lot of carbon fiber, they use exotic materials in order to save weight, which is going to drive the cost up. Top speed, 0 to 60 acceleration, size of their battery, manufacturer's stated range, Here's where I added the 20% for the regeneration, their range per kilowatt hour. And what you'll notice here is that most vehicles are right in that four to five miles per kilowatt hour range. There is this outlier here, which is the Mitsubishi. Again, I'm going off the manufacturer's stated uh, information. So this makes it a little bit suspect to me. Here are your costs per mile if you're buying your electricity at 10 cents per kilowatt hour, middle of the night, or peak hour rates, 50 cents a kilowatt hour. Now, as a frame of reference, if you're driving a vehicle that gets 25 miles to the gallon and you're buying your gas at $3 a gallon, that works out to 12 cents per mile. If you want to study this spreadsheet, you might want to pause the video, or I'll also provide a link below where you can download a copy for yourself. Typically, an electric vehicle is about $5,000 more expensive than its gas-powered counterpart a lot of areas will offer a tax rebate for moving to an electric vehicle. For additional savings in your area, that's something you might want to check into. Now, another thing to keep in mind with an electric vehicle is that they are going to weigh more than a gas-powered car. Um, batteries just simply weigh more than the engines do. And the more battery storage you have, the more weight you have. Now, this also has an impact on some of the wearables, particularly your tires. Your tires are going to wear out a little bit faster, and because the electric vehicles are all about efficiency, they typically use a higher performance, low rolling resistance tire that's going to be a little bit more expensive and potentially has a larger wheel size, as you'll find on the Teslas, and they're going to have a higher load rating. So budget tires are pretty much out the door. Now on the plus side, being an electric vehicle, oil changes are a thing of the past. You no longer have to worry about that 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 mile oil change, whatever your chosen interval is in your gas car. Doesn't apply with your electric vehicle. So you can save that 50 to $100 or whatever you might be paying for an oil change. There's a handful of websites online that you can go to to find charging stations all around the country. And there's any number of different programs from free charges to uh, paid subscriptions to paid by the hour to paid by the kilowatt and so on. There's also a lot of forward thinking businesses these days that are installing electric vehicle charging stations 
on site. Shopping malls, some public parks are doing the same thing. And like I said, it's only growing and growing. Now, if you live in an apartment or a condo or somewhere where you don't have a, your own driveway or garage, you're going to want to think about where you're going to charge that car. A lot of uh, complexes will have charging stations for EVs, but not all of them do. And if you park in the street, you're probably not going to want to run a power cord from your house across the sidewalk to your car. So those are some of the logistical things that you're probably going to want to think about. Most of the vehicles on my list will accept a fast charge. Basically, if you have the equipment to flow more electricity into the car, you can charge the battery faster. That's going to be a, an, an additional expense. Unless you're driving a Tesla and you're using their supercharger stations, it's going to be an additional expense for you to either install at your home or your office or wherever you plan on doing your charging if those fast charges are important to you. Now, just in the last couple of days here, uh, Tesla did offer free battery charges to their customers, but uh, they've taken that away. Uh, I'm not sure what the charge is going to be now, but the free charges for Tesla owners at the Tesla supercharging stations are a thing of the past. If you're like me and you have solar on the roof of your home and you generate more power than you actually use and you use that extra power to charge your car, that creates an interesting cost metric as well. I thought Tesla's website was great. It was very interactive and it went so far as to allow you to dial in what wheel size you were using, what the outside temperature would be, whether you're going to run your air conditioner, your headlights, your, your windshield wipers and so forth to give you a more precise predicted range out of the car. I thought that was a great feature and I love the interactivity. On the other side, on the Mercedes-Benz website, well, I don't give that website very good marks. Okay, well, exciting times to be looking into electric vehicles. There's a lot of cool stuff going on, and they continue to improve every day. If you think I missed anything in this report, uh, please let me know in the comments. If you have any further questions, again, comments. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comments. <laughs> I well, hope you guys liked the video. Uh, please consider giving us a like and subscribe to the channel for more information. We're going to be doing more videos like this. I've got a whole bunch more planned. Look forward to talking to you soon.